Welcome back to Naval Action and episode 28 of A Letter to the King. To those of you new to the series, A Letter to the King is my endeavour to keep us up to date with what's going on PvP-wise on Euro PvP 1. Before we get stuck in, let's have a look at where we were last week. Um, now I have to say, controversial, I was actually pretty much thinking of going on hiatus with Letter to the King because there's so much gibberings in chat and forums about how we're all just waiting for the now delayed port reset and how folks don't really care too much anymore about the port battles. But then I realised that's rather doing an injustice to the Alliance's War, the new Alliance's War, so I'm going to do things a bit differently this week and I'm going to focus um, on the story of the Alliance's War. So where were we last week? The Dutch had gone mad and decided not to defend their western flank anymore and were tally-hoeing to the east and giving the French um, a bit of a handful over here. The sneaky French had managed to grab a port up north. Um, the Brits had snagged a port uh, amongst the pirate ports on the south tip of the heel of Cuba. The Swedes had been knocked out of Haiti um, and were really constrained to their ports uh, on the northern Antilles, uh, a bit of a stalemate up here between the Spanish and the Brits, and the Americans were having a kip. Um, so as I said, I'm going to do things a bit different this week. The uh, alliances thing is still the same, there's been no change to the alliances apart from the silly drop-in and drop-out mechanic you get every now and again because of the length of voting versus the period you stay in an alliance but fundamentally uh, the Americans, the Brits and the Dutch were up against the French, uh, the Spanish, the French, the Danes and the Swedes and the pirates were running around giving everyone a good snotting. So what happened this week? Well here you go, news flash, Spain, France, Sweden and the Danes have won the war. Now, I know folks don't like this. I know, but I haven't given up. I'm still fighting. So were them there Japanese 30 years after the war had finished on their various little islands. Um, the war is over. And the Spanish, French, Sweden, Danish alliance have won. So if we go back to before the alliance's patch, um, there was the British, Dutch, Swedish... Um, and US alliance and they pretty much won that one. It ended with the three admirals treaties where the aggressors or the victors I should say decided that enough was enough. Uh, the Danes and the French had packed up their bags and didn't want to play anymore because they didn't like the port timers. The Spanish were taking a shellacking in their home territories around La Habana and no one ever surrendered. I'm not saying anyone ever surrendered. I'm not saying anyone gave up but basically the US, British, Dutch, Swede alliance won. And then out came the new patch. And with the new patch came the official alliances, as I had on my last slide. And the Swedes swapped sides. Maybe that was the telling difference this time around. I don't think so. But, you know, Swedes can claim it. Hey, eh? why not? And for the last 10 weeks or so, this a war has been raging. And I think it can probably be broken down into three parts and then some sort of key elements as to what it could be. What it could be that tipped the balance this time round. So let's, rather than just look at this week's uh, fighting, because I think this week's fighting has been a bit of a, a sorry affair of, of basically uh, beating a, a dead horse. Let's have a look at, at what happened in this latest war. So don't get yourself all salty and sad because I've said you've lost um, or too jubilant because I've said you've won. First of all I, I carry no authority I'm just a noob with a tube um, but basically we need to this is perpetual war in a PvP server it's never ending war war never ends only the dead know the truth of war um, war never ends however we can split it up into chapters so long before I arrived on the server, uh, maybe the pirates were winning, uh, the British were beaten back to a couple of ports, 
um, probably the best part of six months ago with the what became known as the War of the Alliances, the Grand Alliances. Um, we can, I think, easily say that the, the, the British, Dutch, um, Swede and uh, US forces had their say. Um, then we got the new patch with the alliances um, and the Swedes swapped sides. The pirates at that point have been beaten back to a much smaller holding. Um, but the pirates always win because if the pirates have no ports, they say they're a nation of pirates and they care little for ports. And they just go around sinking ships at random, bless them, and they do it well. Um, if the pirates have lots of ports, they say, look at us, we're a nation, and even though, even though we're not a nation, we've got lots of ports. And they sail around sinking ships, and they do it very well. Um, the pirates at one point during this battle sailed with three, um, three full fleets when they smashed the Swedes to pieces. So they're still much of a fighting force, a much effective fighting force. So let's not get ourselves um, let's not get ourselves carried away too much. But the pirates can't lose; they can only win because they sink ships, and that is victory for the pirates. But in this war, I'm calling it Spain, France, and Sweden, and the Danes. You've won. Well done. Let's have a look at how you did it. So if you think back to the start of the war, um, the Brits were pushing hard on the Spanish and were snicking up ports. They took Corrientes and a bunch of ports, uh, these little islands here, they were taken by the Brits. The Dutch made a run onto Haiti and captured a whole bunch of ports up on Haiti. Um, the French made inroads slightly um, on the east flank of the Spanish holdings, um, but really nothing, nothing substantial um, there. Uh, they were held up at Pampatar. Uh, the Dutch held Pampatar and were unshakable from that point, but the, the French did catch up a few ports around here. Uh, the pirates were running around ganking, and they were, they, they were egalitarian in their ganking. They, they just pretty much ganked everybody everywhere. Uh, the Swedes took a bit of umbrage um, against the pirates, and they swept in, and they, they took all of the north of Haiti and, and started eating down here a little bit. They even grabbed up ports on the south heel of Cuba, and they took a bunch of ports, this sort of little quadrangle of ports off the pirates around here. The US had a little bit of a salvo against the pirates. They grabbed up the odd port on Cuba proper, but um, nothing too substantial, to be honest, from our American friends. Um, and at one point it was looking like the Spanish were going to be in trouble again. Um, the Dutch were, were strong and, and were holding here. Um, and then, really, the big change happened. And the big change happened when the Spanish looked at their weakest. They did some island hopping. And this has been a great tactic of the Spanish throughout the campaign. Most forces push um, sort of um, consecutively along a, a line. The Spanish like to sort of jump way away from the front line and grab ports up miles away and with the two-day holding. That's a very good tactic. And they island hopped across. Uh, and the British puppies can pay some of the price for this recovery. They, they, they let a, um, a port go here that was a longer sail from the British capital than it was from the um, Spanish attacking port. And they made it in here around Corrientes, the Spanish. Um, now, at the same time, this basically gave the other forces, the French and the Danes and the likes, the Danes were, were very inactive comparative to previous campaigns, but they, they helped push with, with pirate helps as well. They helped push the Dutch out of Haiti proper. The Dutch had to come out of Haiti proper because the Spanish were beginning to knock them up um, along here. And really their whole coast along Nicaragua and Venezuela was under threat as, as well as their holdings in Panama were under threat. Um, the French made a little bit more push but they were still held at Pampata. They grabbed up a few more islands on the mainland but they really weren't making any inroads. Um, the Swedish and the pirates were beginning to get stuck into it on regular um, events. Um, and, and indeed, the, the secret, secret pirate islands fell and the secret pirate ports, the, secret pirate, the Bahamas to the north fell uh, to the Swedes and the Danes and the Dutch. Sorry. Um, and, and what we saw here then was, was probably the best of the war. Um, well, the best of the war, really, from the sort of British, Dutch, um, and um, US uh, perspective, as in the fighting was of the highest quality. The battles around here had both forces fighting. 
Now, the Dutch are a strange beast. Um, a clog is a good metaphor for the Dutch because really it's two clogs. It's the left clog and the right clog. And, and they're a split nation and they, they really run as two completely separate groups uh, or one group and another group. Um, and they showed this in spades um, as, the, as the fighting um, got to its highest. The, the, the Dutch nation were very split in as, as to how to defend. Uh, and, and this was bad timing for the Dutch because it was at about this point that the British interest began to dwindle. Um, now I have a bit of a problem with the British support uh, of the Dutch during the war. Uh, and it's a difficult one to talk about because, of course, the British who fought um, to help the Dutch fought as hard as they could. And there was a good 25 to 40 sailors. They spilt enough blood around Canalette for those beaches to have a pulse. And they lost enough ships around uh, Tombedo to walk to uh, Cuba across the wreckage. And, and, and the British captains who fought fought as hard as they could. But it wasn't enough and it wasn't enough of them. And it was very frustrating. I find it very frustrating sailing out of KPR to teleport a, a first rate down to the front lines um, to sort of sail through a dozen ships all setting up, a dozen first rates all setting up for a bit of AI fleeting. Um, knowing that you're going to run 15 first rates into 25 well-armed Danes or ready for it Spanish um, or French or whatever. Uh, and at the same time, there's an equal number of British ships just fleeting around KPR. Now, you know, half of me says, look, they bought the game. They can play the game any way they want. Half of me says, yes, it is a lot of effort to sort of move down to one of these faraway fronts. And, you know, why do we give a pants about what's going on far from our home shores? This isn't just the British, it's any nation. Um, but at the same time, it's those same people who, when they can't AI fleet, because the waters are filled with baddies, because they're not drawn away um, in these far-flung wars. You've got to remember, if we're not fighting the baddies, and this is true of any nation, when I say we, it could be the French, it could be the Spanish, it could be the Dutch. If your fighting forces aren't fighting on someone else's shores, you're fighting on your own shores, because that's how PvP works in a PvP server. So as much as I respect people's rights to buy a game and fish if they want, or just trade, we've got lots of guys in our clan who just trade, it's what they love, um, it still irks me. It still irks me. They never have a port set up near the front line. You're calling out for help and, oh, I haven't got a port anywhere near there. And it's been the front line for three months and it, 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 it gets on my goat. And I thought the British were particularly poor at it in this campaign. And I think they under-supported um, their Dutch colleagues. Um, now, part of that was the shadow of the port reset. But, of course, this is, this is the thing with winning and losing. The Spanish were on their knees. They were almost broken. And when it got at their worst, the thing I noticed, and I made comment about this three or four weeks ago, and I think it's, the, 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 it's sort of how the Spanish turned their part of the war around. I started seeing new Spanish names in the port battles. These were puppies who'd basically come to the cry um, of their PVPers. And all of a sudden, for, for a week or so, you'd see these completely new names. And they were cutting their teeth and they were losing their ships like you do when you first fight in a port battle. When you get yourself cut off and massacred. Um, but the next week, they weren't noobs. They were now hardened. They'd lost a a juror or five and they were hardened and they knew to follow commands and they knew when to shoot sails and when to go face to face um, and the Dutch the Spanish fleets that fought around here um, probably for the best part of 15 days they kept they kept the intensity up and they kept the intensity long enough up to wear down the Dutch and the British so the downwards you have a snowball where you're winning people jump on board when you're winning and you have a spiral when you're losing. People find an excuse not to fight anymore when you're losing. And this began to happen. Now, the British leadership has probably been away for the best part of five or six weeks. The classic guys who used to lead the raids, uh, the port battles, I should say, have been away for five or six weeks. There's a lot of people on hiatus. Um, the Dutch have a thinner leadership structure than they have in the past. And the Spanish persistence... Um, they hung on, at one point they were down to a single port in this neck of the woods, and they hung on grimly, Baron Quiller, they hung on grimly, probably for the best part of a week. 
and they broke the backs of the British and the Dutch resistance to the point where the Dutch changed tactic. They had great discord amongst their own community. They changed tactic and started heading this way. Now, at the same time, the other critical change came in, um, and it was a, a couple of things that happened. Firstly, the Danes came in and they supported the French, and they supported the French in the taking of Pampatar, which was a first-rate battle. Now, Pampatar is an important port to the Dutch. Uh, it's a strategic port. It's always been their front line against the French. Now, the French um, basically um, got the uh, Dane first-rate fleet, and this is a first-rate fleet that in the previous war, um, the sort of chapter, think of these wars as chapters, the previous war, um, this, this first-rate fleet cut its teeth on Arves against um, what was then the strongest British clan. And this is a well-hardened Danish fleet. And it came in, the best part of 20 ships joined um, half a dozen French ships and took Pampatar. And that broke the Dutch spirit in the east, just as the Spanish holding Baron Quilla remorsefully um, broke the Dutch spirit in the west and the British support began to peter. At the same time, the French, now whether or not it was one lone alt or dirty French tactics, uh, pulled a flag on the Swedish allies, um, which allowed the pirates to come in here. And the pirates grabbed up one of the Swedish ports. This forced the Swedes to pull out of North Haiti. And in, in the back in black day for the pirates, uh, with three full fleets more or less running, they, they just smashed Haiti to pieces. Uh, which increased the, f the threat level for the British in the north as well, because all of a sudden they've seen the pirates on Jamaica before. Um, they had a little salvo, the Brits, um, to push back into the Danes to try and break the Danes' involvement down here, but um, the French actually began to run again with flag exchanges. The French began to appear on this side of the map and stretch the British further. Um, and really this just led to the... Um, eventual collapse of the Dutch-British-US alliance um, with the Dutch being pushed back to at one point two ports two ports and the British being pushed out um, not just uh, down south but even up north here the Spanish began snagging up more ports um, and this of course brings me to uh, sort of something that you don't really want to talk about but you have to talk about it and that is it was never really four on three. It was always sort of four on two because the U.S. have really not been involved. Now, there's two reasons for this, really. One is their player base is relatively small um, and they're very geographically dislocated from what was the front line. Um, but also, you know, there are, there are, I sailed with some of the US guys when they were defending themselves around here and they, they were getting 20 man, 25 man fleets, 20 man fleets at least. Um, but the other thing is the port timers. So I play in the Aussie time zone and one of the reasons I was almost not going to make letter to the king is because this war's over for me. One of the issues with the current mechanics is that the victor sets the timer and of course this was the thing that the Danes and the French hated so much in the previous chapter in the um, the three gen the, the the Grand Alliances war um, well in this one the 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 Spanish the Danes and the Swedes and um, the French put all of the ports they captured onto the same timer now that did two things it basically meant the Americans couldn't participate. It also meant that the British numbers advantage that they have was neutered um, because the British, although their player base is large and by far the largest on the server, it's very split. So you've probably got 60% of the British player base in the Euro core time zone. And the rest of it is more or less evenly split between the US time zone and the Oceanic or Aussie time zones. Um, and by putting everything on those same timers, um, it's basically four o'clock in the morning and daft o'clock in the early afternoon for the Americans. So it's, it's um, sorry, sort of early morning for Americans. It's completely pointless um, trying, to, trying to be involved. I did it for three weeks, but I couldn't keep waking up at four o'clock on a weekend to participate in port battles. Um, so that sort of broke my resolve, as it were. Now, I've just realised, I realised this... <clears throat> 
that the US, um, I've been watching, you watch a lot of movies as you do, and of course the, the other thing is the US were never given an inspiring speech. And if we watch uh, US movies, they always require an inspiring speech to get into a battle. You know, I, I won't, we won't go quietly into the night. Ich bin ein Constitution. Ask not what your alliance can do for you, but what you can do for your alliance. We will fight them in the open world. We will fight them in the ports. We will fight them on the forums. You're a wizard, Harry. Ta-ta, Clarice. All right, I've, I've lost my train of thought a little bit with my movie quotes there. But there you go, America. There's your inspiring speeches. We'll build a wall. Make the bastards pay for it. There's your inspiring speech. So next time you're in alliance, boys, we need you um, irrespective, even if you side with the pesky Spanish or then them, them their French people. Um, get stuck in. You can't be sitting there on the sidelines bloody doing nothing. Um, same goes for the British AI guys. Come on, guys. You're going to have to get in in the next patch release. So anyway, um, hats off. To the Scoobies and the French and the Spanish and the Swedes. Um, good to see the pirates back in numbers. Uh, the Brits and the Dutch will have to lick our wounds and get ourselves ready for another battle um, after the we get the updates. I don't know what I'm going to do next week, to be honest, if they don't give us the update soon. Um, I was going to try and get some good ganking videos. There's a lot of ganking going on outside of the various capitals. Um, uh, in fact, there's two of the guys whose videos I like, uh, Sruple and uh, Hethwell. Um, check out their videos. They've got quite a few good ganking videos. Unfortunately, I tend to be on a little later in the day. And, and, and really, the only ones I've found, there's been three types of ganking videos. Um, one where it's just an absolute slap fest, one side outnumbers the other so ridiculously it's it's uh, it's 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 baby killing to be honest. Um, the other where it's runaway games and and so you get these guys who turn up in the Renaults or the Trinks and they pick on some poor trader, but when they get tagged by a decent fleet, um, you just play a game of runaway, tag their sails, repair their sails, run away some more, uh, hide in the battle screen. So that that doesn't make for good viewing. Um, and uh, the, the one good one I did capture, uh, unfortunately I inadvertently captured TeamSpeak and um, I, I, if I'd have edit, edited out the inappropriate audio you'd have been left with a oh it's a battle and oh well that ended well uh, and everything in between um, was a bit uh, rated um, and, and probably broke several OH&S rules um, that would have had my channel violated across the board um so I'll, I'll try and get some gank action up during the week um or I'm, um i might do another ship review uh, but we'll see what we do for letter for the king now the focus of course is on the patch reset and the patch reset will come with its own challenges this is the map horribly skewed out of proportion to fit on the screen uh, get yourself into the forums to check it out all the free ports are moving uh, and there'll be some interesting things. So the interesting things, um, if you're thinking about, you know, where shall I set up for um, to support my nation? So the interesting thing really is Spain is interesting because, you know, it's going to be hard for Spain to have any allies because, let's be honest, you're going to have to take Spanish land uh, almost no matter who you are. Um, I think this area here is going to be like a noob zone. So this is where noobs can fight each other and there's different rules of engagement. Um, all the free ports are moving. So you'll see here Key West has moved over here to La Tortugas, the worst port in the world to get in and out of. Um, there's new free ports here off Navigation Island or Go Island as it's often referred to. Um, Spain just owns huge swathes of land. Uh, the Brits are very fragmented. They're all over the place. Um, the French too, I mean they've got three really different zones. I, I wonder if their community will decide to sort of sit in one around here, their sort of ancestral home, or will they try to set up new bases around New Orleans um, or the western side of Haiti. Um, the US, of course, they're wedged into sort of 
um, Yankee US. Um, so you know, their really their only push is down against Spain. You can't you can't see any other push there. Um, what will the pirates do? They start off with you know some uh, very small areas. Will they go for the Bahamas, for example? Uh, the Swedes they they start off with bugger all. Um, the Dutch, really, given how influential they were in the area, they've given the Dutch a very tiny slice of the match, map. And the same goes with the Danes. The Danes have got a tiny slice of the map. Um, so I, I can't see, you know, you can't imagine the Danes and the Swedes going at each other because it's like two ports versus two. There's, there's not much land to be grabbed there. So it's going to have to either be the Brits or the Spanish. Where are the French going to go? It's either the Brits here or the Spanish up here or the Spanish here. Uh, the Dutch have to go at the Spanish almost. They've got almost no choice. Um, so the Spanish are going to be short on friends but rich in, in land. Um, so start thinking about this. Start thinking about where you're going to set up. And the other thing I noticed, this just came out today. It was on the um, their Facebook channel, the Naval Action Facebook channel. Have a look at this for a bit of excitementness. So this might be coming in in the next patch. It might be included in open world battles. I don't think it's included in their port battles yet. Uh, it may affect missions close to um, cities that you're trying to agitate. But have a little look. Fortifications, fortifications, fortifications. How exciting is that? Um, so if you imagine you're having a battle just off the coast here, these things are going to be snotting you with 68 pounders. Um, and of course, when we actually get these into port battles, you're going to have to think about bringing in the mortar brigs and all that sort of good stuff. So that's uh, that's very excitement, isn't it? Eh? Um, I can't wait. I mean, I really, it's, it's like being a bloody seven-year-old on Christmas Eve and being told that it's actually, it's been put back a day at the moment. Uh, we have to wait. I'd, I'd rather it work um, than, than not work. I do implore you that when we finally do get this patch, there'll be broken shit in there. There'll be stuff that doesn't work. Um, let's not jump on the forums and demand our money back and say how it's game breaking and how the end of the world is here and how you're choking on your own tears. Get in there, give it some, call out the problem, explain the problem. Provide the constructive criticism. Perhaps offer a preferred or alternative um, option for how that particular element could be executed. Uh, but for the love of God, let's knock out the fucking juvenile um, entitlement bullshit that we get in the forums quite often when a new change comes in. The reaction we got to the events. The events weren't done well. Everybody knows they weren't done well. But girl, blimey, the piss and vinegar in the forums. It weren't right. Look at this. Look. Pew pew. Towers and forts and forts over here. It's very exciting. I wonder if they're procedurally generating it or if they're going to have to craft them for every um, every town. It wouldn't surprise me if they have to template them or craft them for every town. We'll see. It's very exciting. So we come to the final tally board for me of, of, of this war. Um, I'll do something next week for Letter to the King, but I it, it won't be um, un unless we get a surprise and and all of a sudden organised hostilities pick up and everyone gets involved in it again. Um, but this for me is the sort of final tally board. We see the British on the wane and the Americans not involved, the Spanish, the French and the pirates all on the rise. Uh, the Danes lost a few ports, but that's actually because um, the Danes and the Spanish have agreed to start giving, uh, offered, they didn't agree to anything, um, no one surrendered, uh, the, but the Spanish and the, and the French and the Danes have basically said enough is enough, um, we're stopping attacking now, so the, they've just left ports open uh, for the Dutch to take back after they got smacked down to two ports. Um, the Swedes lost another port, um, I, th I think that was a port off Cuba from memory. And the Dutch were down to two ports. So you can't say you've not lost when you're down to two ports. Um, and that's it for this week's Letter to the King. I think it's the end of another chapter. The end of the first of the Alliance Wars. Let's hope the patch comes out soon. And in the meantime, I will see you on the oceans. And I will catch you. <laughs>